the Lotto's Eaters by Alfred Lord Tennyson, Courage, he said, and pointed toward the land, this mounting wave will roll us shoreward soon. In the afternoon they came unto a land in which it seemed always afternoon. All round the coast the languid air did swoon, breathing like one that hath a weary dream. Full-faced above the valley stood the moon, and like a downward smoke, the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall did seem. A land of streams, some, like a downward smoke, slow dropping veils of thinnest lawn, did go, and some throw, wavering lights and shadows broke, rolling a slumbrous sheet of foam below. They saw the gleaming river seaward flow from the inner land. Far off, three mountain tops, three silent pinnacles of aged snow, stood sunset flushed, and, dewed with showery drops, up clomb the shadowy pine above the woven copse. The charm sunset lingered low a down in the red west. Throw, mountain clefts the dale was seen far inland, and the yellow down bordered with palm, and many a winding vale and meadow, set with slender gallingale, a land where all things always seemed the same. And round, about the keel with faces pale, dark faces pale against that rosy flame, the mild-eyed melancholy lotto's eaters came. Branches they bore of that enchanted stem, laden with flower and fruit, whereof they gave to each, but whoso did receive of them, and taste, to him the gushing of the wave far far away did seem to mourn and rave on alien shores, and if his fellow spake, his voice was thin, as voices from the grave, and deep asleep he seemed, yet all awake, and music in his ears his beating heart did make. They sat them down upon the yellow sand, between the sun and moon upon the shore, and sweet it was to dream of fatherland, of child, and wife, and slave, but evermore most weary seemed the sea, weary the oar, weary the wandering fields of barren foam. Then someone said, We will return no more, and all at once they sang, Our island home is far beyond the wave, we will no longer roam. Choric song I there is sweet music here that softer falls than petals from blown roses on the grass, or night dews on still waters between walls of shadowy granite, in a gleaming pass. Music that gently are on the spirit lies, then teared eyelids upon teared eyes, music that brings sweet sleep down from the blissful skies. Here are cool mosses deep, and throw, the moss the ivies creep, and in the stream the long-leaved flowers weep, and from the craggy ledge the poppy hangs in sleep. 2. Why are we weighed upon with heaviness, and utterly consumed with sharp distress, while all things else have rest from weariness? All things have rest. Why should we toil alone, we only toil, who are the first of things, and make perpetual moan, still from one sorrow to another throne, nor ever fold our wings, and cease from wanderings, nor steep our brows in slumber's holy balm, nor hearken what the inner spirit sings, there is no joy but calm. Why should we only toil? The roof and crown of things? 3. Lo! In the middle of the wood, the folded leaf is wooed from out the bud with winds upon the branch, and there grows green and broad, and takes no care, sun steeped at noon, and in the moon nightly dew fed, and turning yellow falls, and floats a down the air. Lo! Sweetened with the summer light, the full juiced apple, waxing over mellow, drops in a silent autumn night. All its allotted length of days, the flower ripens in its place, ripens and fades, and falls, and hath no toil, fast rooted in the fruitful soil. IV. Hateful is the dark blue sky, vaulted o'er the dark blue sea. Death is the end of life. Ah, why should life all labor be? Let us alone. Time driveth onward fast, and in a little while our lips are dumb. Let us alone. What is it that will last? All things are taken from us, and become portions and parcels of the dreadful past. Let us alone. What pleasure can we have to war with evil? Is there any peace in ever climbing up the climbing wave? All things have rest, and ripen toward the grave in silence. Ripen, fall and cease. Give us long rest or death, dark death, or dreamful ease. Versus how sweet it were, hearing the downward stream, with half-shut eyes ever to seem falling asleep in a half-dream. To dream and dream, like yonder amber light, which will not leave the myrrh bush on the height, to hear each other's whispered speech eating the lottos day by day, to watch the crisping ripples on the beach, and tender curving lines of creamy spray.
to lend our hearts and spirits wholly to the influence of mild-minded melancholy, to muse and brood and live again in memory, with those old faces of our infancy heaped over with a mound of grass, two handfuls of white dust, shut in an urn of brass. V. Dear is the memory of our wedded lives, and dear the last embraces of our wives in their warm tears, but all hath suffered change, for surely now our household hearths are cold, our sons inherit us, our looks are strange, and we should come like ghosts to trouble joy, or else the island princes over bold have eat our substance, and the minstrel sings before them of the ten years' war in Troy, and our great deeds as half-forgotten things. Is there confusion in the little isle? Let what is broken so remain. The gods are hard to reconcile. Tis hard to settle order once again. There is confusion worse than death, trouble on trouble, pain on pain, long labor unto aged breath, sore task to hearts worn out by many wars and eyes grown dim with gazing on the pilot stars. 7. But, propped on beds of amaranth and moly, how sweet! While warm airs lull us, blowing lowly, with half-dropped eyelids still, beneath a heaven dark and holy, to watch the long bright river drawing slowly his waters from the purple hill to hear the dewy echoes calling from cave to cave throw, the thick twined vine to watch the emerald-colored water falling throw, many a woven acanthus wreath divine, only to hear and see the far-off, sparkling brine, only to hear were sweet, stretched out beneath the pine. 8. The lotto's blooms below the barren peak, the lotto's blows by every winding creek. All day the wind breathes low with mellower tone. Throw, every hollow cave and alley lone round and round the spicy downs the yellow lotto's dust is blown. We have had enough of action, and of motion we, rolled to starboard, rolled to larboard, when the surge was seething free, where the wallowing monster spouted his foam fountains in the sea. Let us swear an oath, and keep it with an equal mind, in the hollow lotto's land to live and lie reclined on the hills like gods together, careless of mankind. For they lie beside their nectar, and the bolts are hurled far below them in the valleys, and the clouds are lightly curled round their golden houses, girdled with the gleaming world, where they smile in secret, looking over wasted lands, blight and famine, plague and earthquake, roaring deeps and fiery sands, clanging fights, and flaming towns, and sinking ships, and praying hands. But they smile, they find a music centered in a doleful song steaming up, a lamentation. And an ancient tale of wrong, like a tale of little meaning though. The words are strong, chanted from an ill-used race of men that cleave the soil, sow the seed, and reap the harvest with enduring toil, storing yearly little dews of wheat, and wine and oil, till they perish and they suffer some, Tis whispered down in hell suffer endless anguish, others in Elysian valleys. Dwell, resting weary limbs at last on beds of asphodel. Surely, surely, slumber is more sweet than toil, the shore than labor in the deep mid-ocean, wind and wave and oar. O rest ye, brother mariners, we will not wander more.